Today we're looking at example four of section 7.2, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, out of Business Calculus with Excel. Throughout this section, we've been using the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, both versions. If capital F of X is defined to be the integral from zero to X of F of T dt, that's an area function. We can use the area function to compute the definite integral. The integral from A to B of little f of t dt is capital F of B minus capital F of A. That uses both versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus. What we would like to do in this example is use Excel to find the area function under simple curves. In this example, we're looking at linear functions, proportions, little f of x equals cx, and then the area function is capital F of x is c over 2 x squared. In the section we pointed out that if we're finding area functions, we want to use the midpoint rule for Riemann sums. The shaded, the hatched area is what I get with the midpoint rule, and the blue area is what I get with the right-hand rule. Notice that the right-hand rule clearly overestimates on this, while the midpoint rule has some above and some below, and it's pretty easy to see it'll be a more accurate version if we use the midpoint rule rather than the right-hand rule or the left-hand rule. I've set up my Excel table, and this is in the sheet that's attached to the book. So I'm looking at a low x, a high x, going from 0 to 10. I'm going to do cx. My interval width is my endpoint minus my beginning divided by 100. xn is my starting point plus n times the interval width. The midpoint, I'm going to go to the right side and subtract back a half. I evaluate my function at the midpoint. The area of the rectangle is f of that minus times the width. And the sum of the area is the area from where we started to however far we are. I'm going to unshow the formulas. And I see my table here that I can, I've plotted both x and the midpoint. I've also plotted the sum of the areas. And so if I look at this, I'm going to want to find this function. I'm going to start by undoing that and find it again with trend line. I'd like to add a trend line. I'm looking at that, and the red curve looks like it's a polynomial of degree 2. I'd like to display the equation in the chart. That's good. I'm going to make the equation a better size. I've brought the equation up to a size. And we had guessed that it was going to be 3x squared. It's 3x squared plus things that are trying to be 0 because we're doing best fitting, which is a numerical approximation. One of the things that's worthwhile to notice is if I had thinner rectangles, I would get a better approximation. So instead of going from 0 to 10, I'm going to go from 0 to 1. And notice that my exponents have gone from 13 and 10 to minus 15 and minus 14. As I get smaller and smaller, these two things are trying to be 0, so I really get 3x squared. I'm going to go back to 10, and also notice that if I change 6 to 8, I'm going to get 8 over 2, which is 4. If c is 23, half of 23 is 11.5. And so what we see is that the area function is 1 is 1 half c times x squared. Thank you.